Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs of Machine Embroidery, and I'm delighted to be here today. Welcome to this episode of Between Friends. Uh, I, I, so, hello, Judy Warren. Thanks for joining in. So, hey, uh, if you're watching, feel free to go ahead and uh, let us know that you're watching and where you're watching from so I can make sure that everybody um, is you know, able to hear, able to see, and all of that. We have an, ex you know, program today that we're going to talk about adhesive stabilizer and um, continuous embroidery and some different techniques on how to achieve that. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how we're going to um, do some of that. So we're going to discuss centering in the hoop, what I call the risky way and the tried and true solution. And hi folks, hi Misha from Soggy North Florida and hi Sue Brown from Canada. Great to have you here from us. Uh, let's see, and PJ Surge from PA, nice to have you with us. Oh, she's got a Halloween um, emoji, really fun. And Minerva, thanks for coming back. You're down in South Texas, lovely to have you here. Lovely to have you here. So. After we talk about the risky way and the tried and true solution, we're going to talk about prepping fabric for adhesive stabilizer. And you don't always have to do that, but you know, a couple of times uh, you might just have to. So let's take a look at that. We'll talk about how to achieve flawless continuous embroidery, whether it's on, you know, uh, lace, fabric, quilting, doesn't matter. It's all easy to do that. And then we're going to talk about aligning text using basement alignment, which is a little different than centering, you know, design to design. Because when you're, let's say you're doing a beautiful motif, you most certainly would work from the center of the design to the center of the design. But in text, you have extenders that often fall below the baseline. And so the center of that word may not be the center of the previous word. So. We'll, we'll address that. And then we'll talk about some sticky tr sticky tricks. So, and hello to our friends in France. Uh, it's nice to have you with us. And Kathy Winks from Smoky Washington State. Oh, you, all of you folks in the Northwest, uh, Washington State, Oregon, and Northern California are most certainly in our prayers. It's just so concerning to see the damage that's being done out there with fires. So thank you for joining us, Kathy. I hope you're safe where uh, where you are. So let's go ahead and take a look at the doors. I know many of you are doing the doors and I have a couple people to highlight today. Oh, and Retha, you so enjoyed the virtual Wisconsin quilt show and especially the program about Nancy Zeman. It was great, wasn't it? How many of you saw it? Um, you know, let us know in the comments if you watched. It was, um, it, you know, enlightening, wasn't it, to learn about her life and how she um, suffered and, and how she was successful. I mean, she had a joyful life. So let's not focus on the bad stuff. But I know for many people, it would be the first time that they learned of uh, some of the struggles that she had. Hi, Barbara George. Yeah, she says she's out in the colony, Texas, which is a neighboring town to mine. And she watched it and she had no idea how much Nancy uh, had suffered. Yeah. And really, no, she never let on very rarely let on but boy i'll tell you when those cameras went off um you know when we were taping it was often <laughs> definitely a huge sigh of relief and sometimes crutches came out on to her so that she could stand up and walk off the set uh there was a lot of challenges for sure for sure so thank you for watching those of you that did i know it meant an awful lot to the zeman family to have so many people watch and to have so many comments that were um posted after the program and uh, then also, you know, if any of you donated to the Wisconsin Public Television or the quilt show itself on behalf of them, I say thank you, even though I don't really have anything to do with that. But I know I was motivated to, uh, you know, continue on uh, to help sponsor and continue on with that program. So these are the doors. We have May, June, July and August. And many of you know, July was my favorite for sure. Um, and lots of you also liked August. And then in September, we welcomed the gnome. And um, 
he, he's super cute. There were several different techniques that you learned about fabric manipulation. You learned how to use a, a layer of tool or netting to make a De to add some depth to the door. You also learned how to add an extra layer of batting for a trapunto effect. And also the use of fiber markers um, really, you know, gave emphasis to kind of the bark, right? And let's see, uh, Kathy Wink says, uh, Nancy's husband is a rock. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And yes, he was to Nancy. He was a, a very faithful partner and couldn't ask for anything more, I'm sure. And Marion Phillips wants to know, do I know when they will rerun the program? I think Wisconsin Public Television will run it um, Monday the, uh, let me see if I can find out real quickly. Mon uh, Monday, uh, September 28th. You will have to check your local listings for that to confirm. And then it will be released to public television stations across America in March of 2021. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sue S. Brown, Sue S. Brown from our good friend over at OML, she says the September door was her favorite because she loved the trapunto. It is a great technique, trapunto, and really adds character and, and depth to any project. So, you know, now you know how to do it and you can do it on your own. But this week I was scouring the web for some images of other do people's doors. And I came across Carol Johnstone who had posted all of her doors for the whole year. So I thought you'd like to take a look at them. Here is her January and February and her March and April. And in it, you know, she posted, she said she's having so much fun with the doors and uh, she was so happy to get them all done and all caught up to September. So here's her July. Look at the gingham. Isn't that fun on the surfboard? Super fun. And uh, then her lake house for August and her, she used the same gingham, gingham for the hat for the gnome. Really cool. And I like the fabric that she used in the grass. Kind of it looks a little uh, mountain-like or I don't know. It's just, that's a really nice illusion. Another post that I found was by Sharon Crean. And there's her September door and her August door. Don't you love the, the hot air balloon that she added to the sky in her lake house? Oh, I just thought that was so charming, just delightful. And I thought you would also enjoy Diane Char. Look at the fabric that she used on her tree. Now, you know, if that was in my stash, I probably would not have selected that. But when you see it in application here, it looks great. It looks just great. And she added a little bit of busyness to her door. Super fun. I really like that. And then Muriel Butler, she added Lake of the Woods, which possibly is the title of her, her lake house, right? That's super fun. I really like that. So I hope that you are following along and you know, next week is uh, when we reveal October. So a little bit of pressure there, right? Because lots of people like, um, October. It's, it can be a favorite month for many people due to the beautiful change of seasons and also, you know, the leaves, but it's also Halloween. So yeah, super fun. This week's product that we're featuring is Sticky Hoop. Now, I know we introduced this in June and many people took advantage of it and then we were out of stock for quite a while. So it's back on sale right now if you're interested. And a five by seven and six by 10 for baby lock and brother machines. We do have other models coming out soon, but you know, I tell you with COVID, you just can't imagine how it has had this triple trickle effect of delayed of product release. It's not just us, it's the boxes, it's the packaging, the printer, it's, it's the shipment from the warehouse. I, it's, a little unpredictable. So we most certainly appreciate your patience in all of this. So um, thanks for hanging in there with us. What do I use it for? I love to use it for really hard to hoop items like um, an embroider of buddy. Hey, I have to say hi to a couple of friends here. Cynthia Havard from um, Southwest Florida. Nice to have you here, Cynthia, now that you have a little bit of time on your hands. And Lorraine Allen, hello. Lorraine Allen used to work for us here at Dime for many years. So if you've been a longtime Dime customer, there's a good chance
Lorraine's that you spoke to Lorraine on the phone. So thanks for joining us here today, ladies. So an embroidered buddy is a very difficult thing to hoop, a boy sticky hoop answers that dilemma. And also, you know, makeup cases, these embroiderables as they call them, you know, they're designed to unzip so you have a flat area of the hoop that you can just place right on a sticky stabilizer and add a monogram or a saying. And the spa slippers, you know, a lot of people really like to make these as gifts and, um, you know, it's super easy to do with a sticky hoop. You, you know, I like to use a larger hoop, the six by 10 for these slippers, because that larger canvas allows, a, it creates a space for the sole to sit on. So. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. So let's talk about centering in the hoop. Now, this is what I call the risky way. And I have done this most certainly, my you know, for many years. Um, I love our target stickers and I place it on the center of a fabric. But when I'm using a sticky hoop, I'm often tempted to attach the hoop to the machine and then just slide the fabric with the sticker in place under the needle. Um, I can center it for sure, you know, align that needle with the crosshair, but I'm not always so sure that um, it's square, right? It may not be perfectly square. So it's a little risky, a little risky, not that risky. Um, the, the, my tried and true solution though is with the use of perfect alignment la laser, the PAL. I love that product. It is truly one of my favorite products and I, it just solves so many problems. So how do you use it? Well, we're going to talk about that, but you know, when you buy your sticky hoop, go to my blog and, uh, search for the enter the word crosshair in the search field, and you'll come up with this post, which is the handy crosshair. And in the post, it'll show you how to apply the your rulers that come with the sticky hoop to the hoop. Now these images don't show the sticky hoop, but it's the same process. You would hoop the sticky stabilizer and stitch across, or frankly, any stabilizer, and stitch the crosshair that you download from my blog and then you place that under PAL, aligning the hoop uh, marks with the beam. So here you have already centered, let me back up on that, okay? So you're going to align your, your perfect alignment laser with a cutting mat or our dime hoop mat. And then you slide your hoop that has the stitched crosshair on the stabilizer underneath PAL, and you will align the beam with that stitched cr crosshair. And then you simply add your rulers on the hoop frame. And you can see you want the zeros to hit the beam, both in the top and the, um, bottom and the right and the left. And do we have replacement rulers? We most certainly do. They're not on our website. You have to call the, the, um, the main number, which is 888-739-0555. And you do that, I mean, we don't have it on the website because it's basically a, a, um, a, a replacement park. So let's see, um, I'm listening. Uh, Jen Leo wants to know, Eileen, she loves our products, but she tuned in late. But is this using the base alone without the magnetic top? Well, it it is the base alone, but it's sold separately. You can use your monster hoop with a sticky stabilizer. You can adhere the, adhe the sticky stabilizer to the bottom of your hoop, but you will harm the suede that is on the bottom of your monster hoop. And you need that suede when you are using the monster hoop in the traditional fashion. So we have created a separate product called Sticky Hoop. It's a much lower price than the monster hoop because it doesn't have a magnetic top. And it just gives you that flat base. Of course, with the attachment still recognized by your machine, it comes with a pack of 25 pre-cut uh, tear, tear away adhesive stabilizer. So it fits that frame absolutely perfectly. So that's the difference between the two. Um, just to, you know, kind of clear that up. Yeah. Okay. So where do we go next? Now let's head over and take a look at our hero shot, which I love. And this is uh, what I just stitched to kind of show you this whole example. 
this spooky Halloween. Isn't that beautiful text? And do you love that thread? This is our new purple metallic thread. It is just gorgeous. The King Star brand, available only through Dime and our dealers, but it is just luscious. So I couldn't resist not stitching a Halloween phrase in the metallic thread on this fun lime green fabric. So I used a five by seven hoop. And if I would show you how big this is, this is one, this fills a whole five by seven hoop. So I can't get that in there together. So in my software, I just, uh, I write out the text and then I select this portion and I add placement marks. It's just an icon that's in our Word Art and Stitches. It's also in our Lace software and it's also in Perfect Embroidery Pro. Then I also add placement marks to the second design. And I will stitch all of this design. And then when I hoop my sticky stabilizer for the second design, I'll stitch just those placement marks on my sticky stabilizer. And here you can see I've already done that. So here's my placement marks. As you can see, they're stitched. You need a center one and your two on the corners of the design. And then I just slide that underneath PAL. And I want to make sure that my vertical line is aligned with the center and the top of my alignment marks is positioned right underneath that horizontal crosshair. And then when I stitch, when I place my fabric, this is my for my second hooping, I just position that vertical beam with my stitched placement mark and the bottom of these alignment marks with that beam. And then I know when I stitch this design, it will come out exactly as planned. And here I can show you if I had a template, how that would work perfectly. All of that spacing between the kerning between the letters is going to be absolutely perfect in these two hoopings. So it doesn't matter what size hoop you have. You could have a five by seven, you could have a four by four. Yes, if you had a really large hoop, you could do this in one hooping. But you know, often we're writing very long phrases. You might be writing text along a quilt border or something like that, and you can't fit it all in one hoop. So that's the easy way to do that. Now, what if you don't have placement marks? And many of us don't have sophisticated software, but I can tell you if you are serious about machine embroidery, you need good software because you're going to want to make a whole lot of changes to all of your designs on your own. So what I would do if I didn't have um, place, the ability to have placement marks, so let's just make pretend that these are not here and I've stitched my first design and then I take a ruler and I mark with removable uh, ink and I just mark the baseline and I'm gonna go right down here and mark that baseline. And I would also measure the distance between my letters. So this is, oh, uh, let's say it's about, uh, yeah. I don't know, th three dashes there, it's really small. So my next, letter should go here. And I can draw that line. I can draw that line if I want. And now when I place this, when I have my stabilizer and ignore those marks, right? Just make pretend they're not there. And I would place my, uh, Sticky stabilizer for hooping number two underneath PAL and then slide my fabric in place. And this time I'm aligning the baseline with that long vertical line and I'm aligning the horizontal line with the horizontal mark that I made with my measurements. And now when I stitch that out, it will also come out in the same position, just like I had hoped. So that's pretty simple, right? Don't you think? Isn't that an easy way to do it? 
Yeah. Oh, Judy Warlet. Oh, that was really sweet. Well, I enjoy showing you. I don't want to keep all this knowledge inside, you know? I mean, I, why wouldn't I share it? It's just great. And let's see, Retha, Retha Ranky wants to, Ranky, I'm sorry, wants to know, is the purple metallic thread available? Yes, ma'am. It's on our website right now. Uh-huh. And let's see, Cindy, you're talking about um, how the stock of Kingstar Metallics, Becky with Power Tools was just talking about it. You know what happened when, when someone mentions Kingstar, it's gone. Yeah, well, the purple's in the house. It, and so, and Halloween's coming. So fair warning, fair warning. Um, you know, you should, if you want it, get it because it is beautiful. Yeah, Sandy Akira, you love it. You love it. And Isabel Brian, you want to know when the sticky hoops for Husqvarna Viking and Bernina will be available? I'm going to risk and say within three weeks, three to four weeks. But remember, that's risky. There's so many things that are out of our control when it comes to this COVID time. And when we think things are getting better and we all take such special you know, care about our own personal health. But when you think about, you know, truck drivers and and shipments across the country, there's just, oh my goodness, it's it, it's challenging. Helen, you want to know what was the font that I used? Well, that's a secret new new font that's um, called, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a secret new font that will be available soon. So look for that and it uh, will work with our Perfect Embroidery Pro. And then what size is the door is the doors? They come in six by ten, Sharon. Six by ten inches is the size of the doors. And you know, we always have we have that free software embroidery tool shed on our website. You can download it and use it at any time to resize those doors. So if you're not using our, you know, frame um, that we all like to use, this frame. I mean, this is why we make it six by 10 because it fits that frame. If you have a five by seven frame or an even larger one, you most certainly can just download that embroidery, uh, the embroidery tool shed and resize it. Just go right ahead, especially this one, because that this one is just about all simple uh, running outline, uh, outline stitches. Is this for Brother Luminaire? Um, Yes, these hoops do com are compatible with the Luminaire. Uh, on our website, we have a compatibility chart. The five by seven is available. Um, I mean, is compatible with many, many Baby Lock Brother um, machines. So make sure you check that um, in you know on our website. But yeah, if you have the Luminaire, they're all up, you know the Luminaire takes all of our hoops. Okay, so what is next? Let's see. Now, what about do you often do I, people have asked me, do I prepare fabric for adhesive stabilizer? Well, normally, probably not. But I'll tell you, when you're doing text, you may want to fuse a stabilizer first to your cotton fabric before stitching the text on adhesive stabilizer because that adhesive stabilizer comes in two versions, tear away and water soluble. And so they both go away, right? They're not there anymore. So um, it's very easy to uh, just fuse a no-show mesh fusible to the wrong side of your fabric or something such as Fuse So Soft, which is a Trico knit interfacing uh, type of stabilizer that we often use after embroidery to cover up bobbin stitches and make it more comfortable next to the skin. But it's also great for adding an extra little bit of, uh, you know, foundation to your fabric when you're going to be stitching a lot of text. So that's how I often treat it. And when, if I have to use a long expanse of that stabilizer, and you know it only comes in so many uh, widths, then I, uh, you know, cut it like I would batting. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about how when you take two pieces of batting and you lay them over top of each other, and with a rotary cutter, draw a curvy line. And then when you fuse it in place, they butt up next to each other and it would just be very easy. Uh, let's see, Roxana says, she's always been afraid she was messed up splitting in a design. It's so easy. Well, you know, it, 
It really is pretty easy. It really is pretty easy. And if you start this learning this task of continuous embroidery with text, it's very friendly because there's there is truly space between, you know, the letters, the kerning. So if you fudge it a little, you know, if you mess it up just a little bit, nobody would really know. So um, start the, you know, practice that technique with text. Now it's very important that text is aligned, right? Has to be on the same baseline. So that's where placement marks come in. And if you don't have software that adds placement marks, then most certainly you can use a removable marker and draw a line that the baseline goes on. And so when you are doing that, then you are not really focusing on the center of the design. You're making sure that the edge, the bottom edge of the text is going to be aligned with your drawn line. <laughs> okay, let's see. And Cindy Knight, she says she uses um, fusible interfacing to uh, cover up yeah, to eliminate shadow is what I would say, right? That you don't want the stitches underneath to bleed through, especially if you're making like a mug rug. And Misha, you use fusible interfacing on heavy embroidered satin. Oh yeah, because, oh, you don't want to, you don't like to hoop satin. I understand that. Although, you know, you've, I've had quite great success hooping satin in monster hoop. But also if I was doing something, you know, I would, that I wanted to really remove all that stabilizer, I would use the sticky water soluble. What is the color number for the purple? It is MA23, MA23, Kingstar. Yes, ma'am. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so royal. Lovely. Yeah, I know. And then Cornelia, you want to know what about Janome machines? We are going to have a five by seven for the Janome 500 and 500E. And, and if the, if there's such a thing as a 550E, I think they're probably all about the same machine, just some um, upgrades to different models. Um, yes, that will be coming out at this pretty much the same time as the, as the, Husqvarna Viking and the Bernina. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So let's see. What else do we have to talk about? Did I hit all my things that I was supposed to hit? Oh, yeah. And then let's talk about how we patch the, the stabilizer from the wrong side. So I have a six by 10 hoop here that I'll show you that I've already stitched, you know, has a big hole. You know how that happens, right? So then we take um, a piece, oh, you should see my little mess here. Okay. So then I cut up uh, the stabilizer and I start to peel that off. But first I place my hoop upside down. And if I have the protective paper, I place it on the protective paper. Now I don't know that I can do this here because of my actual setup, but what I like to do is position this attachment off the table. So there we go. I'm still in a little bit, as you can see. So, but my attachment is off the table and now my hoop is nice and flat on, on the surface. And I've peeled off the sticky of uh, the protective paper and this is my sticky side. So I'm going to place that right over that hole from the back and smooth it down in place. You really want to make sure you get all those corners and edges nice and flat because when you attach it to the machine, you don't want the machine bed to catch a corner. Oh, that can really be messy. So just smooth that down really well. And because I have my protective paper, you know, between the hoop, the sticky side of the stabilizer and my surface, I don't have to worry about, you know, dislodging it. And then there you have it. Now I can stitch this multiple times and I can continue to repatch and repatch. Eventually I'll pull this off and tear it away, but um, it doesn't really matter. You, you'll know when you have too many layers. You'll just know it, it won't be holding as tight as you'd like it to. So you'll know that it's time to change for sure. Okay, Sandy Acuri said, um, she entered M23 in the search will be available today. So I'm hoping somebody on my team can answer that. Uh, I, I hope so. Oh, and we have Donatella is joining us from Italy. Hello, Donatella. I have had two fabulous vacations in Italy. Um, 
that are vacations of a lifetime. I can tell you that. So where are, where are you, Donna? Tell us tell us where you are. Love to know. Beautiful country. Great food. Huh. Let's see. And um, Risa, you said you never would have thought to patch the stabilizer. Oh yeah, that's it's a great way to say this. That stabilizer is expensive. You know the adhesive stabilizer. So you should always patch. Definitely. Mm hmm. And, uh, and you like that idea to patch. Yeah, it definitely does keep the mess down. And I like the idea of that you, oh, <laughs> that you um, place the hoop upside down and extend that attachment off the table. And uh, our friend Donatello is in Venice. I understand right now due to the reduced tourism in Venice that things are lovely in Venice, that you can see dolphins in the canals, so. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to go there yet, but it's on my bucket list, I can tell you. So we've had a lot of fun here today. I really appreciate all of you joining in. Next week, we have um, some really, uh, ex well, we have some exciting things happening next week. Woo! We have um, the October door. And yeah, there is probably going to be some purple metallic thread in it now that you've seen it. But I'm also going to debut a brand new product that I have been working on for 11 months. And I am so excited to tell you. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you. It, it's, it's a secret until one more week. And um, I think you'll love it. I know I do. And there's going to be two versions, two similar problems. No, not really. Just one thing at a time. So you'll see. You'll just have to tune in next week because that's what's going to be really exciting. I'd like to also share with you a treasure from the past. If you remember or if you read Designs and Machine Embroidery Magazine, one of our very faithful advertisers was Embroidery Arts. And Embroidery Arts is a website that has the most ex uh, exquisite lettering for purchase in uh, globally, really. It is absolutely beautiful. And the owner, his name is Richards Jarden. And Richards has collected um, a beautiful array of hand were hand embroidered handkerchiefs. And he gifted them to me so that I would share them with you. And I did share them in the magazine on the last page. We called it uh, a peek into the past. Uh, and I did that for about eight issues. But, you know, then we said goodbye to the magazine. So I still have these treasures. And I thought maybe you would enjoy taking a close look at one every week. And Kristen, uh, Kirsten, you say, oh, gosh, Richards, his monograms are the best. Yeah, we, so you're a fan, too. I know. He is an exquisite artist. He really is. And his digitizing is just to die for, just absolutely to die for. So as we take a look at that handkerchief, isn't it just exquisite? Now, this is by hand. So know that the embroidery design itself is large. It's about six inches wide. It's almost square. But it is worked in these tiny little stitches, tiny little satin stitches. It has two colors of thread. It has that very kind of pale golden, and it has the black. And the black is worked so that it looks almost gray, uh, because, it, you know, the artist or the embroiderer who has created this used spacing to add that gray effect. So it's not really another color. It's just um, black thread. And it, it is absolutely exquisite. I don't know what I like the most, whether it's the letter or the bird or those flowers, but the backside is as beautiful as the front. Isn't it just lovely? It really is. So, you know, these are things that are handed down, right? To, from one generation to another. There, you know, and many years ago, um, many years ago, people would gift them uh, at, on a woman's marriage or a birthday, or if she graduated, when she graduated high school, those times, those types of things. So, um, you know, that they all have a story. And Sharon, you want to know, will these be for sale? That is not in the plans. Um, 
that's not in the plans. We really hope to share this editorially here and uh, possibly in other ways in the future, but uh, they're really kind of priceless. I don't know how we would how we would do that, but, and, and it was gifted to me from Richard. So I don't think I'm the one who should sell it for sure. Um, but they are lovely. So, you know, as we work with all of our technology today, all these wonderful machines and the software and my goodness, metallic thread, I mean, all these things, it's absolutely beautiful. It's just absolutely uh, amazing how these techniques really all started um, by hand. And it's so it's just amazing to see. And so we have a question here, Arito. She just tried out her new sticky hoop. Everything came out fine. She was wondering uh, to peel off the hoop. She had a but yes. Well, okay. So this is a good question. She had a bunch of fuzziness stuck on the back of her hoop as she tried to peel it off that came with the hoop. Um, yeah. So you you're not going to peel it off. You're going to just, you know, you're going to peel it off and then you're going to add another layer. The fuzziness is going to be there. That's why we came out with sticky hoop. Otherwise you would have that dilemma on your beautiful monster hoop that you want to use with the magnetic top. So we just intend that you will continue to add, uh, you know, I have that kind of fuzziness here too, somewhat, if it doesn't like here, it ripped cleanly. But you can see up here, it didn't rip so cleanly. So, but that's okay. You're just going to use um, another piece of stabilizer and cover it up, and that's its main function. That's the sticky hoop. So I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. Well, I think uh, we don't really have any more questions, unless you do have any more questions. And you, PJ, right, Serge, you're right. They are absolute heirlooms, and they are for inspiration only. Yeah, they, they're really a treasure. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you cleaned yours off with alcohol. Great idea. You most certainly could do that. Uh, you could use Goo Be Gone. That is a little bit of an oily substance. It works fairly well. Um, but um, I just I just add another layer. I mean, it doesn't, what's the difference? The stabilizer is always going to be there. I'm not going to be able to use that hoop in any other fashion, right? Because it's not going to hold anything unless it has sticky stabilizer on it. So, and our Mary, will the magazine be available in a digital format? No, it will not be available. We're here every week. And uh, this is kind of our new magazine, live and in person. Um, you know, print has, uh, had struggles for sure. We're not the only one. Goodness, the Newsweek folded, you know, Family Circle folded, <laughs> Ladies Home Journal, you name it. Many, many machines, uh, magazines have um, gone out of business. We had a, a fabulous run of over 20 years. We were the first embroidery magazine in the industry, and it was an honor to um, watch this grow together. But um, if you can't, make it financially viable, then um, you can't continue to have, biz ha to have um, you know, a magazine. So let's see, Annette wants to know, where do we find the add on for the doors? Well, you may be talking about um, our friends over at OML Embroidery. They uh, do a sew along the Saturday following the reveal of the dime door here. And um, Sue Brown and Don, they head that up and they often have extras over there. So I think that might be what, what you mean, I hope. <laughs> so, okay. So, well, thanks everybody. And um, next week we're gonna have some really fun stuff. I can tell you, I'm so excited. I just can't wait. I wish it was Thursday. Let's see. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Take care.